What's up guys? Welcome back. I'm Mike. And I'm Britt. And we came across a couple of statistics the other day that you may want to sit down for if you're not already. The total credit card debt owed in the U.S. just came in at just under 400 billion, with a B, 400 billion dollars. And with the average household owing a about $6,700. Yep, and that's revolving debt, meaning that's the amount of debt that's kind of transferring month to month on the credit card, not just the balance on the card. Now, the good news is that this number seems to be going down year over year over the past couple of years. But the bad news is a credit card is one of the worst places to accumulate debt, and that's yeah. just because the interest rate's so high. According to Investopedia.com, the average interest rate, at least for 2021, on a credit card is about 20%. Which means the typical household carrying credit card debt today is paying about $1,300 per year in interest alone just to have access to someone else's money. And this isn't even the worst of it. We've heard horror stories mm -hmm. of people owing like forty dollars or $50,000 on their credit card. I mean, just imagine how much interest they're paying. So in this video, we're going to go over the seven biggest mistakes that, in our opinion, people make when using credit cards, especially as a beginner, that often leads to situations like these where they just end up with massive debt. And we'll also be explaining how to avoid these mistakes, so if you want to use a credit card, you can do so with it actually decreasing your cost of living rather than costing you a bunch of interest. And you can also have a bit more protection against fraud. And again, guys, as always, we're not professional financial advisors. This is for entertainment purposes only. This is just our opinion. With that out of the way, uh, let's get into it. The number one mistake, in our opinion, that people make regarding credit cards that we think if, if people could just do this one properly, the other ones would kind of fall into line, they wouldn't be such a big deal. And that mistake is using a credit card at all. If you have trouble with or are confused about personal finance and managing your money in the first place. So this one may seem a bit obvious, but we feel like we have an obligation to at least mention this and go over it a little bit. Just for people who are brand new to credit cards or maybe looking into getting into them for the first time. If you're not disciplined with your finances, and you're not keeping track of how much you're spending and how much you're bringing in every month, which is basically budgeting, we strongly recommend not getting a credit card. Or else you risk getting yourself into a world of trouble. So we would recommend just getting a debit card, writing out a budget, operating on a written budget, and just kind of learning the ins and outs of your finances first. Then once you get a hang of that, then maybe think about getting a credit card once you've kind of like learned how to properly manage your own money. This way, at least you learn why it's so important to operate with a budget by experience. So if you're new to budgeting, Brittany and I will link our free budget template in the description below. No email address required. This is gonna be perfect if you are kind of like brand new or looking to get into personal finance or budgeting on your own, but don't want to do everything like online where other people may have access to your personal information, that sort of thing. And the second mistake when using a credit card is thinking it's your own money when you're using it. And basically it's not. So if you purchase something with a credit card thinking that you're using your own money, you may have a nasty surprise coming for you at the end of the month yeah. when you get a bill in the mail for all the stuff that you spent money on. And uh, maybe let's say you spend a bunch of money in your checking account on other things that you could have paid this credit card bill with. Now you're kind of out of luck, scratching your head what to do, right? And you may not be able to pay the bill. So the solution to this is just to recognize how this works. Keep a detailed record of what you're spending money on with your credit card, how much it costs, how much money you're putting on there. And that way, when the time comes to pay it, you're actually ready. You know exactly how much you owe, etc. So what Bernie and I would suggest, not, not a professional financial recommendation, <laughs> obviously, just for entertainment purposes again, but we've heard that it's not very good to put, be, put more than like five or 10% of your credit limit on the credit card because that could decrease your credit score and it could send off like red flags to, to lenders. Okay, and the third mistake regarding credit cards is having one in place of an emergency fund. Now, this is something that we hear all the time, that people say like they have a credit card for an emergency fund. So if, if an emergency happens, they can just pop out their credit card and pay for it with a credit card. In our opinion, this is a bad idea. Credit cards can be used for emergencies, sure. However, if your sole intention of getting a credit card is just to have one in case of an emergency, that may mean you don't have enough cash set aside to pay for an emergency in the first place, which means if one happens, if a rainy day happens and you whip out your credit card because you don't have enough cash, that really runs the risk of you going into debt. We would recommend saving up cash for an emergency fund. And typically it's recommended to have anywhere from three to six months worth of expenses saved up. So something else that you could potentially be missing out on if you're using a credit card for emergencies instead of cash is the interest that this emergency fund can be building up in a high interest savings account, like Ally Bank or something like that. And these next two kind of go together. So number four is spending more on your credit card for an item than you would be if you were paying cash. 
So there was a study done by MIT a while ago that said like basically, or it concluded that when you're paying cash for something, it like activates the pain sensors in your brain, which means it's like painful giving your cash away to pay for something. With a credit card, or I guess a debit card for that matter too, those pain sensors aren't activated in the same way. There's this risk of paying more for something with plastic than you would be paying for the same thing with cash. There's also this temptation that I get, that I think all of us have that, you know, given, given access to somebody else's money, to pay for things that we would be, be paying for anyway, just for our own daily lives. Like we'd be more apt to pay more for that with somebody else's money than we would be paying for it with our own. Those two things combined, I guess, make it so there's more of a risk if you're paying with a credit card of spending more money than you would be with just paying cash for something. So this is why it's very important, like we said at the beginning of the video, to budget your money. Have a plan, have an intentional, purposed spending plan at the beginning of the month. This is how much money I'm gonna spend on food. This is how much money I'm going to spend on furniture or if you're buying a car, this is like, this is how much money I am intentionally going to spend on this car, whether it be five or 10 or $20,000 or whatever. And then sticking to it. Yeah. Don't think that just because you're spending money with plastic that you're not going to have to come around and, and reimburse or pay that back. Yeah. I guess the point here is just basically treat your credit card as a debit card. And number five is spending more on your credit card than you have the actual cash available to pay for it. And this one may seem obvious as well, but if you're spending more money on your credit card than what's available in your checking account, you're going to be forced to carry over a balance, which then you'll start to accrue interest on, and it could potentially turn into this revolving cycle that we talked about at the beginning of this video. Which is a perfect segue mm -hmm. into Sixth mistake, mm -hmm. or the six, not, not six, the sixth <laughs> mistake regarding credit cards, and that is carrying a balance. If you haven't figured it out yet, this carrying a balance is what accumulates interest. So typically what happens is you're given a 30 day window by the bank or credit card company or whatever to, to reimburse the bank or credit card company for whatever you spent money on on the credit card over that billing cycle. If you fail to do this completely, then you will be charged interest typically at a rate of around 20% on whatever is remaining. And again, that statistic is about $6,700 for the average household carrying credit card debt. You don't want to fall into this statistic, guys. It just, it, it yeah. completely defeats the purpose of having a credit card. We're gonna go over some things in a few minutes that having a credit card can be really beneficial for. You don't want to have to pay a bunch of interest to have these benefits. It's just not worth, you might as well just not even use one at all. Right. And number seven is thinking credit cards will make you wealthy. Yep, so this one comes from Dave Ramsey. One of the reasons Dave Ramsey often criticizes people for using credit cards is because he, he says like, they won't make you wealthy. I know like Dave's program is all about building wealth and getting out of debt and things like that, but we, Brittany and I are kind of unsure where this particular point or point of criticism comes from because we've never used a credit card with the intention of becoming wealthy from it. Or, yeah. or thought it could make us wealthy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We don't know anybody else who thinks that way either. However, Dave Ram we have a lot of respect for Dave Ramsey. Mm -hmm. I mean, he's much more financially experienced than we are, has a lot more money than we do. And he's been around, you know, the block, so to speak, <laughs> you know, speaking with people about their finances, et cetera, for a long time. So, you know, I, I guess there there is some portion of the credit card user population mm -hmm. that thinks by using one, they will accrue wealth from it. And this just isn't true. You won't. The best you'll get is like between 1% and 5% cash back on certain items, free travel points or a free, a free flight every now and then, which will definitely decrease your cost of living and can add up over time, but it's not going to make you wealthy or, or build your wealth or make you rich or anything like that. I mean, you'd have to spend hundreds of thousands of dollars on a credit card just to make back anything really meaningful. And, and at that point, you're just spending way more than you're keeping, which, which means you're not becoming wealthy. You're just giving your away your money. And the solution here is just to, just to recognize this, just to realize this. And remember, remember that, like, for, for example, if you're using a 2% cashback credit card or something like that, you're going to have to spend $100,000 on that card just to get back $2,000. This is not going to make you wealthy. So from our experience using a credit card, the two things that we found beneficial from using them are... One is decreasing your cost of living. So like Mike was explaining, it can decrease your costs by about one to 5% depending on which type of credit card you get and what items you're spending money on. So we do this for things we're already gonna buy, like food, gas, things like that. And depending on the type of credit card you're using, you could also get like travel points or um, 
flight miles or things like that. So that could decrease your cost of traveling if you're going to be traveling anyway. You might as well just get a credit card that like gives you travel bonuses and things like that rather than cash back. So they can decrease your cost of living uh, by a little bit, which is better than using a debit card, which doesn't do that at all. The second biggest benefit to us that credit cards has offered is an extra layer of protection between us and our cash. Mm -hmm. So by using a credit card, you're using something that's not directly linked to your bank account. And it is true that credit cards and debit cards have the same level of fraud protection, I think. However, it's a lot easier getting fraudulent charges taken care of and fixed with a credit card than it is with a debit card from our recent experience. So with a debit card, what, what happens is you have to sign this you know, fraud paperwork and it, takes, it could take up to a couple weeks to get the money back if it's already out of your checking account. With a credit card, you just call up the company and say, hey, I didn't make this purchase. None of your money is actually gone. You probably still have to fill out like fraud paperwork, but right. you're not out that money. Whereas if somebody gets a hold of your debit card or something like that and makes a purchase on it, you are out of that money for a week or two or three or however long it takes. And that's it guys, that concludes the seven biggest mistakes in our opinion that people make with credit cards, especially as beginners. We hope this video was helpful. We hope we provided you some value, some useful information, especially if you're somebody who's looking into getting credit cards. If you guys enjoyed this video, please give it a huge thumbs up. It helps out tremendously with the YouTube algorithm. And subscribe for more and don't forget to follow us on Instagram at It's Brett. We post there every now and then. Yep. Thanks again guys, we'll see you next time. Bye.